Hello, it's Scott Manley here with a quick follow-up about my space plane design for Kerbal Space Program. The 1.03 changes has uh, made the engines a bit less efficient, so you want to cut down on the amount of oxidizers so you're not carrying nearly so much to orbit. But other than that, you'll still be able to get to orbit with a, re a modified plan, right? So, yes, you could admire those gorgeous new afterburner effects. I'm not sure how realistically they are, but they certainly do make this look a lot like an SR-71 in flight. The SR-71 was strange amongst aircraft in that it pretty much ran its entire flight profile with afterburners on all the time. Looking very impressive, I'm sure, but this uh, is going to need afterburners all the way up. Which means we're burning a ton of jet fuel, of course. So once you're free of the runway, you need to climb, but don't climb, oops, don't climb as hard as you previously did. Previously I was able to manage a 30 to 40 degree climb with this design. You more want to get around 15 degrees, right? Uh, th this might be a little low, but you want to get your speed up just a bit to about 300 meters per second, 250. And then uh, pull your nose up so that you're in a steady climb rate. We're going to continue the profile as usual once we reach altitude. We just need to get going a little faster early on so that you can carry that speed to higher altitudes. With the engines, remember, the faster you're going, the more air you're getting into the engines, the more uh, thrust you're getting, so it kind of feeds back on yourself. If you're traveling at like 150 and you find yourself unable to accelerate, then drop your nose a bit and you will begin to accelerate a little faster. Then once you're around you know, 250 to 300 meters per second, that's the time when you want to find your kind of sweet spot for climbing. You don't want to go supersonic until you're above like 8 to 10 kilometer region. That's when the air gets thin enough that you're not going to be burning huge amounts of fuel accelerating through the sound barrier and everything. So yeah, just continue this climb. I've now managed, uh, I guess it's a 20 degree climb, although my nose is pointed at about 25 degrees. Previously I would be pointed up around 40 degrees. Now the plan, as before, is that once we get close to our to the appropriate altitude for accelerating up to hypersonic speeds, we're going to hit the, hit the uh, prograde button and that will begin to let our nose drop down. We're just going to do it because that will kind of let the, the aircraft naturally level out. So ready for this? Are we ready? We're about eight, nine, uh, I mean we're right in the region so let's do that. And then once we get down to about 10 degrees, we'll, we'll tell our thing to start holding its nose up again. You see now we're already shoot, shoot, shooting through the sound barrier. I'm just going to make a slight course adjustment, uh, adjustment here. Getting up to about 400 meters per second, come on. There, yeah, 400 meters per second. So now we're beginning to accelerate up and the engines are really catching hold here. So. Once we get our speed up about Mach 2, which would be about 700 meters per second, we'll really start to begin a proper pitch up maneuver. Just adjusting my pitch just a little here. Remember, the higher up you go, the less air there is, the less air resistance, but the less air to fuel your engine. So you're kind of riding this balance here. You want your thrust to still be increasing as you're getting up towards. So that, that's me, I've hit peak thrust now, 600 meters per second. I'm gonna turn on the the rockets once we get once that thrust really starts to drop down. So I'm gonna get ready. Hit the lights. Remember to turn on those rocket engines. We'll do it at about I don't know between 200 and 150. So 175, right? Yes. There we go. And that will then carry us upwards. Now, of course, we're gonna begin a bit of a pitch up here. We wanna. You don't wanna be too hard. You don't wanna pitch too hard into the airstream because that creates a lot of drag. But equally, you don't want to to be pointing straight down or exactly along the velocity vector at this point because your time to apoapse is still kind of low here. Remember, the time to apoapse is what's really important for getting into orbit. Once you get it above one minute, it's, you're pretty much guaranteed to get there. Okay, flame out, start to align along the prograde vector, and yeah, there we go, our time to apoapse is rising. And now it's time to switch over to time acceleration so you can appreciate the whole ascent into orbit without having to wait for that whole uh, orbital insertion and everything. So yeah, look, we're getting up to uh, suborbital speed or suborbital insertion. We have 
fairly decent amount of liquid fuel and oxidizer left. So this design still works, you're just going to be left with a little less fuel than you had before, but still enough to do some decent maneuvers, rendezvous, whatever, and enough to continue and return to the launch site. So yeah, the design still works if you fly it well. I'm Scott Manley, fly safe.